In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we bless your name for this uh, glorious time. We thank you because every time we come around your table, around the world, you always speak to us and you feed us. We are praying, Lord, feed your people once again, even now in Jesus' name. We just praise you for everyone. We pray that your praise will never cease in their lives in Jesus' name. We know that there's revival on the way. We pray, Lord, there's revival. None of us will miss it in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray the joy of revival, the joy of signs and wonders will come in the hearts of all your people in Jesus' name. Lord, as we come to your word now, bless your people. I pray that the joy of the Lord will be their strength. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. We're looking at Nehemiah chapter 8. Nehemiah chapter 8. And we're looking at chapter 8, verse 1. It says, And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate and they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses which the Lord had commanded to Israel you see this is actually what brought the revival they have been busy building the walls and everybody had the same vision the same mind the same heart the same spirit the same goal with nehemiah they knew that the building of the walls was not the end they knew that yes now we've completed the wall in chapter six and this time now they came together everybody from the whole nation they said there is still one thing missing that the building of the wall is not going to bring revival by itself that now we have the wall of security around us it's high it's thick it's deep and it goes all around and there is no division there's no crack at all in the wall but then revival does not come just because all those walls are up the word of god the covenant of the lord the might of the lord the promises of the almighty are giving us us want to hear that again our commitment to the word of the lord our obedience to the word of the lord they knew that that was the dawn of revival that's why this, they all came together the young and the old the men and the women every section of society every city they came together and he said there's one thing we want one thing we need and that is the word and then they spoke to Ezra you have not heard much about Ezra but Ezra was the priest while Nehemiah was the governor look at verse 9 of that chapter 8 in chapter 8 verse 9 and Nehemiah which is the Tashatar that is the governor and Ezra the priest the scribe and the Levites that taught the people that taught the people they all came together and with one mouth with one concept with one purpose and with one direction one goal they taught the people the same teaching of the word of the lord the people saw the need for a solid foundation to be laid if they are they are to build for the future they led their cities and they all came to jerusalem to seek the word of god their spiritual hunger and the spiritual thirst led them to ask Ezra to teach them God's word. Their desire was awakened by a number of things. There are three things that actually motivated them. Why did they all talk to one each other, one another? Why did they make all that contest? Why did they bind themselves together to say we're all going in unison as one man? And we're going to tell Ezra, bring out the book of the word of the Lord and reveal the mind of God unto us. Three things. Number one, the effective, instructive, inspiring teaching ministry of Ezra. They had watched Ezra and they knew that Ezra had the word of the Lord and that he taught with conviction he taught with confidence and with courage and he said we need a teacher like this Ezra chapter 7 I'm reading there from verse 10 Ezra chapter 7 verse 10 it says for Ezra and prepared his heart 
to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach in the Israel statutes and judgments. They knew that Ezra was a prepared man, a prepared minister, a prepared preacher, a prepared teacher of the word. And he said, that is where the word is. Let's go to him so that he will teach us the word. Number three, they saw the righteous, God-honoring, word-based example and leadership of Nehemiah. And because they saw his word-based life, and they saw a scripture-based leadership. They said, we're going to go to the source. And we're going to hear the word of the Lord from these men. Look at chapter 10, chapter 10 of Nehemiah. I'm reading from verse 29. Nehemiah chapter 10. And we're reading from verse 29. In verse 29, here is what it says. It says, they claimed to their brethren their nobles and entered into a cause into an oath and into an oath to walk in God's law which was given by Moses the servant of God and to observe and to do all the commandments of the Lord our Lord and his judgment and his statutes at the dawn of revival when the people come together with one mind and with one spirit and one attention and one inspiration and one kind of attitude and he said we we'll want to bind ourselves together in obedience to the word of the Lord revival will come that was the third thing they saw that there was a new awareness of the righteousness required by God Ezra had told the nobles you shouldn't do the way you are doing this is the time when we need to keep to the word of the Lord. And because they had that new awareness of righteousness, new awareness of uprightness, and new awareness of holiness, that's why they all came together. Thus, they were conscious of their need and they willingly submitted to the teaching of the divine truths of divine liberating transforming truths of the word of god for israel for judah at this time it was a good move towards realizing the promised restoration and realizing the promise the divine favor and the promised divine visitation and a mighty revival this the days in which we live are actually days of spiritual farming as we look at amos chapter 8 Amos chapter 8. And there's anything we should be doing today, we should be acting like these children of Israel, people of Judah, that came together and they said, We need the teaching of the word of God. We we'll don't find it on every street. We don't find it in every area. We don't find it in every community. We find it only in a particular place where God himself has set up. And because God has set up such a place, we all come together, one mind and one heart and one spirit and one attention, and we're going with one purpose and we say that we need that teaching of the word of God coming centrally unto the people of God because of the kind of time we're living in. Amos chapter 8, I'm reading from verse I'm reading from verse 11. Amos chapter 8, look at verse 11. He says, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, or no, it thirst for water, but of hearing of the words of the Lord. You see that? That's prophecy. And the prophecy be fulfilled today because there's a, it's a time of farming. And you go to many locations, you go to many assemblies, you go to many denominations, you go to many cities, you don't find the word of God on salvation, on holiness, on sanctification, on the Holy Ghost baptism, on the standard of the word of God. They just, they might do some religious and give some summary that doesn't touch any life because God said that the time will come when there will be a farming of the world and if during this time of the farming of the world that there's no word in all those places yeah there may be a religion no righteousness oh yes there may be a kind of a kind of worship but they are not walking according to the word according to the law of the lord there may be a kind of denominationalism a kind of Christianity. but then the real christian faith and the christian truth on which christian faith is built is not there and the lord is saying it's a time of farming and if the Lord has preserved us and preserved something for us in this time of famine, we should do like the children of Israel and people of Judah and come together and say we need the word and thank God we need the word. 
and the Lord has given us the word. Yeah, that's why we're giving it out every time so that everyone can benefit. Everyone can drink of the fountain of living waters and take of this bread of life so that it will satisfy our spiritual hunger. That it will do in Jesus' name. Look at verse 12. And they shall wonder from sea to sea and from and then you say from the north even to the east then it says and shall run to and fro to seek the word of the lord they are run to and fro to seek the word of the lord what's the answer there it says and they shall not find it that's the days in which you are living that's the reason why you want to pay attention because the lord has reserved a fountain for us here he has reserved a feast for us here as you get this fountain and this feast of the word of the totality of the word of god the completeness of the word of the fullness of the word of god was saying oh lord but give it to us evermore. Look at the days in which we are living. Second Timothy, I'm looking at chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. Second Timothy, chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. The time in which we live, the days in which we live, the period of the era in which we live, when the word of God is not coming to the people. Second Timothy, chapter 4, verse 3. It says, for the time will come, and the time has come already, when they will not endure sound doctrine. They will not endure sound doctrine. Even when the sound doctrine comes, they will not endure it. They cannot tolerate it. They cannot accept it. It's too hard for them. It's too serious for them. When they shall not endure sound doctrine, and then it says, But after their own laws, they shall keep to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn their ears away from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. What they want is just storytelling. You know, some stories there, stories there, some current affairs, some civic lessons and all that. And then at the end they say, we're going to learn a lesson from all the civic issues and all these social issues. And then they bring something and then after that they just close with a little grace and nothing to change the life. Nothing to touch anyone. Nothing to transform anyone. Nothing to bring conviction. Nothing to lead to repentance. But the Lord is telling us that at such a time, we need to watch. Look at verse 5. It says, Watch thou, but watch thou. In all things, endure affliction. Do the work of my evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. And thank God for Nehemiah. He made full proof of his ministry. And for Ezra, they made full proof of their ministry. We are going to do the same in Jesus' name. The dawn of a great revival. As we look at this chapter 8, and see the reading of the word, the interpretation of the word, the application of the word, the response of the people to the word, the repentance of the people as they turn to the Lord, and then the obedience to the word of the Lord, what had not been done for years, they began to do it in obedience to the word of the Lord. Then you understand why we entitled this chapter the dawn of revival. I'm going to divide the message to three parts. Number one is the dawn of the promised revival, the dawn of the promised revival. As we go through the book of um, Nehemiah, you are going to see the dawn, the dawn, the dawn of the promised revival. The Lord had promised them, and this was the very beginning. The sun just shining at the dawn, and then going to go on to that glorious eternal day. Number two, we're looking at uh, number two here, and uh, number two is the is the demonstration of proper repentance they heard the word after hearing the word they demonstrated what the lord is expecting after we hear the word the demonstration of proper repentance number three their devotion to practical righteousness their devotion to practical righteousness i come to number one as i look at uh, this uh, book of uh, this chapter in nehemiah chapter h let's look at nehemiah chapter h i'm going to read to you from verse one nehemiah chapter eight we're looking at it from verse one and this is all the people gather themselves together as one man no division no disagreement no discord no argument no separation no denominationalism no party spirit there wasn't somebody pulling up and that one pulling down somebody going this or somebody going that other way as one man they came and then he says into the street why because no auditorium could contain them and that didn't bother them at all that it has to be an open air meeting because there were so many it's a whole nation coming together and they didn't worry about where they had a seat to sit upon or whatever on the street it says and then it was before the water gate and they speak unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book bring the book 
Every time you come, bring the book. You come on Sunday, bring the book. And your children are coming, bring the book. The wives and the women are coming, bring the book. It should, there should not be any situation in our church where people come to church empty-handed and they don't have Bibles in their hands. And then some people say because they don't know how to read. Teach them how to read. In the village church, bring the book. In the local government, bring the book. In the cities, bring the book. And when it is a meeting for the nobles and for the rulers and for the early place, if they're coming to church, bring the book. Because that is the secret of revival. But you know, when people come to church, there's no Bible in their hands. When people come to church, they do not have the word of God. And whatever the preacher is reading, whatever the preacher is saying, there is no way to check up that the preacher is preaching according to the word, according to the book. So when we're coming, bring the book. Did you bring the book this morning? I said, did you bring the book today? Where is the book you brought? Let me see that. Wonderful. How can Satan survive in all the strategies with all these books we have? Well, the book, I have the book. I said, I have the book. You know, when you stand on that book, thank you, God bless you very much. When you stand on that word, nothing will defeat you in Jesus' name. And then let's tell our preachers too. Don't bring stories. Bring the book. Let's tell all our overseers, don't come and tell us all these modern things and all these versions. Bring the book. And we don't want to know the degrees you've got. Some of us have got some degrees too. When I was in college, when I was in university, when... bring the book. Don't come and give us all, you know, I, I know international affairs, I read this in America now, this happening, UK, this happening, Europe, this happening, all this research, don't come and take, we can read that in newspapers ourselves. When you come to church, what are we to bring? Bring the book. You come to teach us the scripture, anything you come to do, when you come here, bring the book. We want to hear what the book says. The Lord is not going to judge us on those things you read in the newspapers. The Lord is not going to judge us on the final day on all those pieces of information you are gathering together. You are telling us the Lord is not going to judge us on the basis of stories and illustrations. So there are some people, when they are preaching, the illustration will swallow up the whole the book. And then all you can remember is, he said this, he said this, he said that 200 years ago, there was an emperor that did this and did this, and because of that, the lesson we're learning today from this is this. After that, they sprinkled some verses on, on those stories. All we can remember is the story. Bring the book. The people, they want what is the content of the book. They want to know what is the idea we have there in the book. They want to know by what standard will God judge me on the final day. That's why we are saying to all our preachers, all our overseers, national overseers, state overseers, and regional overseers, and all our local pastors everywhere. When you are coming, you look at the book, you read the book, and then you bring the content of the book unto us. Bring the book. And that is what will satisfy our hearts. We're hungry. The church is hungry. And the church is thirsty. We're thirsty for the word of life eternal. We're thirsty for what God has said. We're thirsty for the promises the Lord has given us. We're thirsty for the precepts he has given us. We're thirsty for all the things the Lord has outlined for us. And he has said that this is the way to go. When you get to the crossroad and something will say turn to the right or turn to the left. Your ears will hear a word coming from people behind you. You, this is the way what keep there in. That's why we're telling all the people, all the preachers, there is nothing to bring to the pulpit. Bring the book. Everybody say, Bring the book. Bring the book. That's what they said. And by the grace of God, that's what keep, keep on doing in Jesus' name. The book of the law of Moses, which the Lord commanded to Israel. And that's the reason why Ezra brought the book unto them. And then he began to tell them, I told you that that was the dawn of revival the dawn of the promised revival and i've looked at this book of nehemiah i see the dawn here um, number one dawn discover active worthy nehemiah that's done discover active worthy nehemiah as we're going back home leaders and overseers and we say the dawn is beginning are right, we going to have the dawn d-a-w-n discover Active, worthy Nehemiahs. When you find a layman like Nehemiah, 
is available he wants to get something done he has a body he has a vision go back to the churches go back to the local churches instead of just saying i'm looking for dr so-and-so i'm looking for you know with days and days and all that we're not looking for people with titles nehemiah did not have any title nehemiah was not an ordained he was not an ordained man he was a layman and as a layman a member of the church discover them discover achieve worthy nehemiah i want you to look at a chapter a chapter to discover this man discover this man find out that man sitting there on the bench and nobody knew anything about him i, I wish you know the church i was going before deeper life began they didn't discover me i was there with them i was there from 1964 i never missed church i never missed their camp meeting i never missed any of the great meetings there i was always there even in university days when i was at university i would still come out I didn't, I didn't bother about education. All I wanted was, I wanted the word. I wanted the word. I was there. They, they never recognized me. They never sought me out. But we don't make the same mistake. I miss people like me who are not ordained. I miss people like me who are not. I wasn't, I wasn't a child of a pastor. I wasn't a child of a priest. I wasn't a child of a religious man. He just went to church and I followed him, my father. But then I was there. I was thirsty for something. And now the Lord saw that thirst. There are people like me sitting down there in your church. There are people like me sitting down there on the benches. Discover them. Discover active worthy nehemiah that's done and then if you discover them you can discover one there discover one there discover one there and you bring out one john wesley there bring out another matching over there and bring out a weak leaf over there and bring out a white field over there and bring that charles wesley there and get them all together there will be a dawn of a mighty revival and look at chapter 2 verse 10 chapter 2 i'm looking at verse 10 nehemiah chapter 2 verse 10 people that have a mind like this a heart like this and they want to walk and serve the lord discover them chapter 2 i'm looking at verse, uh, verse 10 it says in the, this place went shambalach and tobiah and uh, shambalach the horonite and tobiah the servant of the ammonite of the ammonite heard of it it greets them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. Seek out the people that want to seek the welfare of the people of God. They are interested all they want to do. They want to serve God. They want to work for God. They want to build the walls. Number two, don't draw awakened workmen nationwide. Draw awakened watchmen, workmen nationwide. You see, that's what Nehemiah did. That's why the revival came. The dawn we're talking about. You see, all the workers, all the work, all the workers present them. If we're going to have workers retreat like this, let's draw all the workers, all the workers together nationwide, because that is going to bring what we're calling the dawn of a mighty revival. You draw awakened workmen nationally. Don't you see chapter three how they did it? And then somebody is over here, somebody is there, somebody is there, somebody is there, and then all of them they galvanize them, mobilize all of then together that's how the done that's how the revival came nehemiah had the gift of mobilizing people motivating people all those workers from the whole nation and he did that he had received the mission he passed on the vision effectively until everyone became committed to that heavenly vision look at chapter 2 chapter 2 of nehemiah i'm reading from verse 18 and it says then i told them of the hand of my god which was good upon me as also the king's word that he had spoken unto me and they said let us rise up and build he mobilized them he got them together he popped the vision to them and then he drew all those awakened work workmen he drew them nationwide done and then they began the work number three is to develop available willing nobles develop available willing nobles as you look at nehemiah you are going to find that uh, there were some nobles that didn't put their shoulders to the work he didn't spend all his life on those people they were not available they were nobles 
they were experienced they were powerful they were influential but they were not willing to lend their influence their their, their, their skill their ability to the work being done but this man nehemiah he knew those available willing nobles and he developed them and then he mobilized them he made use of them i'm looking at nehemiah chapter 4 nehemiah chapter 4 verses 14 and 15 and, and i looked Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 14 and rose up and said to the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people be not afraid be not ye afraid of them remember the Lord which is great and terrible and fight for your brethren and for your wives for your sons and for your daughters and your wives and your homes then it said and it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us and, and God had brought their counsel to naught and we returned all of us to the world everyone unto his work he mobilized all those and noble people and then he said we're going to do this to get you know something about Nehemiah Nehemiah was no was a king's cup bearer he wasn't he didn't have you know a degree he didn't have any, but he wasn't afraid of people having degrees he wasn't a great builder he wasn't afraid of those who are qualified builders he didn't have any kind of you know kind of a uh, you know trained uh, mind or wisdom what he wasn't afraid of the people that had all those qualities you know what there are some leaders if they don't know something for example there's a leader he doesn't know about finance about uh, you know banking or whatever he's afraid of the people that have that knowledge he'll be pushing them down in his preaching he'll be putting them down and there are some uh, leaders they don't know you know there are leaders who don't know music but there are people that know music and they have trained themselves and they can play on that keyboard and it'll be a blessing to the church but because you know he's feeling that you know the attention of the people will turn to those uh, people once they know them more than the pastor is putting them down other people they, oh, some people can work with children and that, that's that's their calling that's their vision that's their heart and everything they, all they want is just to be able to touch the lives of those children but the pastor may not have that gift or ability and what's he doing is going to say well all of you think that the only important thing here is to take care of the chair come on now everybody sit down there are you children don't run around over he doesn't have to talk to the children and he's going to be pushing down the people that have the gifts that he doesn't have the ability that he doesn't have not nehemiah nehemiah said i may not be a noble man but i know when i see nobility i recognize it and he surrounded himself with the people that are willing and we're telling all our leaders don't be afraid of people that know more than you know don't be afraid of people that have more skill and more ability than you know don't have any intimidation just get them together done means to develop available willing nobles number four delegate able watchmen noticeably delegate them delegate able watchmen noticeably that he is there are some people that give uh, they, they give assignment to people but they don't want people to know that they are the these are the people doing the work over there all they want i want them to know me i am the pastor here i am the leader here but you know you cannot do everything and there are people that are very effective in that area effective in that uh, delegate able watchmen noticeably let people notice them let them go to them you know they don't have to come to you they're asking about their their section and they're asking about what am i going to do here going to do here going to do here we have the brother there who is in charge we have the sister there who is in charge allow them to go to those people and then the work will go on let's look at uh, nehemiah chapter 7 verse 2 delegate able watchmen noticeably we're looking at nehemiah chapter 7 verse you that I gave my brother Ananiah and Ananiah the ruler of the palace charge over Jerusalem for he was a faithful man and feared God above many and that's what Nehemiah did and that's what they had the dawn of this mighty revival that came unto them a truly great minister is greater than a truly great ministry is greater than the minister that is when God has appointed you to a particular work. That work is greater than the worker. That ministry is greater than the minister. And because it's greater than who you are and what you have, 
if it is limited to only your participation and involvement only limited to your skill and ability you're not carrying the work forward get people around you that can do what you cannot do seek out able men capable men dependable men suitable men and women teachable men and women stable men and women available men and women and young people and children and delegate important areas of the work to them following the Himas pattern delegate but don't abdicate delegate but don't abdicate that means to delegate and you're still interacting with them you're encouraging them and you're giving some you know praiseworthy words unto them you're, you know anybody will work better under encouragement don't have discouraging words in your mouth with all those people you have delegated something to them and now they are doing it and when you go there you praise the good things that there may be some things to correct there some of us major only on what is to be corrected and we do not talk about the things that are praiseworthy now number five done is to delete apostate workers names delete apostate workers names that's done if we're going to move forward sometimes you have some names on your you know on your on your telephone and those uh, names are no more relevant either because uh, you know you are no more in touch with them or what you wanted to do with them was temporary or whatever it is something has happened or maybe death has taken them away and what do you do you don't want to just keep that name it's a dead name the name is no more useful you delete you delete and when somebody has been in the Lord, and that fellow now is an apostate, he's a backslider, and we're talking to him. Although his talent is still there, like Solomon, Solomon, you know, still kept his wisdom, but he had uh, 10 wives, and then had uh, 20 wives, and had uh, 100 wives, and the, you know, the wisdom was still there, and then eventually went to 300, and we thought he'll stop until he had 1,000 women that was, uh, you know, cohabiting with. And his, the wisdom was still there. You don't want to keep a name like that on, the on, on your list. You want to delete or post it workers' names, those who are back there. Uh, although they still have skill or whatever, or brain or whatever, but uh, they have gone away from the truth. Look at chapter 7 of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 7. This man was, he had all it takes to have it done. And we're learning from him. We're going to have done in our church in Jesus' name. We're looking at what Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 64. Nehemiah 7, verse 64 it says these sought their register among those that were reckoned by genealogy but it was not found therefore were they as polluted put from the priesthood or deleted or taken away they put them away from the priesthood because if we're going to have done we cannot have defiled and deaf and dead a wood in the you know in the fire if they're defiled and dead we need to take them out so that they will not they will not hinder the progress of the whole work done delete apostate workers names apostates are reprobates they are corrupt and they are corruptors their influence will defile the church as Nehemiah removed them from the priesthood so must we remove them from the list of workers and ministers number six done diligently address workers needs diligently address workers needs if there's some of the full-time workers who have not been you know well placed in their job well placed i mean that they're doing the work but you were not uh, kind of uh, compensating them financially appropriately we look at that and we diligently address workers needs and if we come for workers meeting and you know we need to eat and uh, the preacher will just say oh i'm interested in his preach is preaching we're going to address the need of hunger and the need of good water to drink address the workers needs uh, diligently and then uh, the accommodation we're looking for the accommodation we know that these are the people that are making the work to grow and uh, the people moving the work on and nehemiah knew that he knew that and therefore he addressed the workers needs diligently and if we're going to have done and the work is going to progress the people that are getting the work done every section children's section youth section campus section our choir our ushers our security and all that will come for we come for a retreat where's the accommodation for them and how are we taking care of them 
they are the people to move the work forward and of course uh, electric people and all the people that are working electricity everything will take care of those needs diligently address workers needs i'm looking at me much chapter seven the match of the seven, reading from verse 17. And some of the chief of the fathers gave unto the work. That's how the workers will be, so, will be sustained. They gave unto the work. The Tashita, that is the governor himself, he gave to the treasure a thousand drams of gold and fifty bases and five hundred and thirty priests uh, and government, uh, garments and some of the chief of the fathers gave to the treasure of the work twenty thousand drams of gold and two thousand and two hundred a uh, pound of silver and he goes on to say and that which the rest of the people gave was 20,000 drams of gold and 2,000 pounds of silver and three score and seven priests, uh, uh, seven priests, a uh, garment. So the priests and the Levites and the porters and the singers and some of the people and the Nathanians and all these uh, dwelt in their cities. There are places for them to dwell. And when the seventh month came, the children of Israel Israel were in their cities. You see, they were provided for all the contribution that came. It went into taking care of these people. Let's look at chapter 13 from verse 10. Nehemiah chapter 13, I'm reading there from verse 10. From verse 10, here is what the word of the Lord is telling us, reminding us we need to diligently address workers' needs. In Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 10, and I perceived that the portions of the Levites had not been given them. I perceive, you know, he wasn't in town. He wasn't with them before. He came. And when he came, he saw the Levites were there. The workers were there. But they were not being taken care of appropriately. I perceive that the portion of the Levites had not been given to them. And for the Levites and the singers did the work, did the work. Right, what they were, they fled, were fled, everyone to his field. Then I contended, uh, then contended I with the rulers and said, Why is this house of God forsaken? And I gathered them together and set them in their place. Then brought all Judah the, the tithes of the corn and new wine and the oil unto the treasury so they could take care of those workers that's how you're going to have done the dawn of the promised revival number seven disengage adversaries worldly networks disengage adversaries worldly networks you see deeper life workers who are connected with bitter heart adversaries deeper life workers who are connected with bitter heart adversaries are dangerous to allow among the workforce the deeper life workers who are not uh, they are not uh, content to have their friends here their you know connections here and the people for us to join our hearts and hands together and move on but their connections are outside and everything that is being done here they're reporting to the outside people if we're having any kind of done they are able to take that done to other places and before we even practice all the strategies we're developing here there's a stranger another stranger outside they have all the details of what we are planning and they're already doing it before we even started doing it those are strangers in our midst and you know what Nehemiah did is a dig disengage them those adversaries worldly networks he got rid of them you know when we're talking about don don is uh, you know we just say disappear a whole nation what does it take to disappear a whole nation these are the things that Nehemiah is revealing to us what it will take for us to disciple the whole nation all those that have those worldly connections will disengage them we'll send them away we'll say you're you're not if you're not trustworthy you're not loyal because of that we'll send them away he is a judas in the household of faith 
send him away she is a delilah within the inner circle you know did uh, you know just something was the very top leader was the judge in israel how did delilah get so near that children they were talking all the secrets that even other people in israel did not know about something this delilah knew and every secret she knew was passing to the philistines he told me this at that time you can come with the ropes and bind him because he told me that this and this then they bound him and then there was uh, nothing he came and tore everything apart it's easy to say you love me you've not told me the secret of your power and then he told him another and then i told you in the morning how they are persistent and persistent persistent but something was not like nehemiah of course nehemiah will not even allow a delight to come near near him but you know eventually he said now i'm going to tell you the very and i never told anybody like this before this this and this and then he said he's told me all his mind now you can come you can take him and then he shaved him up he lost his sight he lost his power he lost all the signs and the wonders in his life i pray you'll not be like that in jesus name done is to disengage adversaries worldly networks and then you disengage them before they destroy you before they destroy the ministry and before they damn the soul of the world disengage them we're looking at the image chapter 13 the image chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 28 verse 28 and one of the sons of jehoiada the son of eliashim you remember that man eliashim do you remember uh-huh the high priest he was son-in-law to sambalach the horonite therefore i chased him from me i chased him from me you will not come near enough to know my secret you will not come near enough to know the strategy all that we are planning for the work of the children of Israel the people of Judah I chased him from me remember them oh my God because they have defiled the priesthood and the covenant of the priesthood and of the Levites thus cleansed I them from all strangers and appointed the and appointed the words of the priest and the levites everyone in his business that's, that's telling us that if you really learn from nehemiah you're learning about all these uh, seven things about nehemiah that this is done and when we learn this lesson from nehemiah this will be a major step in our move towards a great a breakthrough in ministry with hands cleansed and hands strengthened with heart prepared and heart purified with mind set on the heavenly vision with eyes fixed and focused on the price of the high calling and with your tongue fully committed and consecrated to the preaching and teaching of the truth as it is in christ jesus we will be god's instruments in the promised revival give me a good amen, amen. as he combined faith and foresight as he combined courage and conviction as he combined um, compassion and correction he combined tenderness and tough-mindedness he combined devotion and delegation he combined prayer and perspiration he combined holiness and hard work he succeeded most of us will combine all these things and we're going to succeed in jesus name i come to point number two now point number two we're looking we're looking at what the Lord is uh, telling us and teaching us of the way the people responded when they had the preaching of the word of God, the demonstration of proper repentance. We're looking at um, uh, Nehemiah chapter 8. Nehemiah chapter 8. I'm reading now from, I'm going to read from verse 6. From verse 6, it says, Ezra blessed the people. And it says, uh, the, the great God, bless the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with lifting up of their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their face to the ground. And Jeshua, and, the, and Benai, and Benai, and Zerubiah, and Jamin, and Akbot, and then all these other good names. It says, and they caused the people to understand the law, and the people stood in their place. So they read in the book, in the law of God, distinctly, and gave the saints and caused them to understand the reading. Yeah, they, they were, these were real good expository preachers. They looked at the, they read the word, they interpreted the word, they explained the word, they expounded the word, they applied the word. 
what was the result of that that's what leads us to this demonstration of proper repentance look at verse 9 and Nehemiah which is the Tashatah that he is uh, the, the governor and Ezra the priest the scribe and the Levites that taught the people said unto all the people this is holy this day is holy unto the Lord your God mourn not nor weep what happened they started weeping they started crying because of the conviction that came upon them they saw as they compared their lives with the word of god they were hearing they had gone astray they are falling and they are come short of the glory of god they had seen in their lives they had transgressed the commandments of the lord and therefore in bitter tears of sorrowful repentance they came before the lord that's what they were telling them don't weep but that was a good response that they had because they trembled at the watch of the lord isaiah chapter 57 isaiah chapter 57 i'm reading from verse 15 isaiah chapter 57 we're looking at verse 15 and you'll see here what the lord expects when we hear the word what the lord expects when the word comes unto us it tells us here in chapter 57 and verse 15 57 verse 15 for this says uh, for this says the high and the lofty one that's the almighty god himself that inhabits eternity whose name is holy i dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones that is the people tremble at the word of the lord and they say we're guilty we're condemned we're convicted of our sin what are we going to do we're seeking the mercy of the lord they were not just uh, hearing the word of god and enjoying the word but the word came to them like a real sword in their soul in their spirit and they repented in jonah chapter 3 jonah chapter 3 the lord is expecting a proper response in repentance to the word of the lord jonah chapter 3 i'm reading there from verse 3 jonah chapter 3 verse 3 it says so jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the lord now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey and Jonah began to enter into the city day's journey and he cried and said yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown so the people of Nineveh believed God and they proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them for the word came unto the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne and he laid on he laid the, his robe from him that he set that aside and covered him with sackcloth and such in ashes and he caused it to be proclaimed and announced a publicized and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles saying let neither man nor beast nor herd nor flock taste anything let let them not feed nor drink water but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto god yea and let them turn everyone from his evil way that's repentance they had the word of the lord and it brought it broke their hearts they had contrition they had conviction and then it led them to conversion and they turned away from all their evil and it says from the violence that is in their hands who can tell if god will turn and repent and turn away from the fears and from his fierce anger that will perish you no know, see the response of the lord to their repentance you no know, when we hear the word of god and we allow that word of god to break our hearts we will allow that word of god to search us out and that word of god to turn us around that will be going the wrong direction and now here is what the word of the lord is pointing out and we say lord we're sorry about this not just sorry mentally not just sorry superficially we're sorry to the death of our heart and we turn away from evil see the response of god for that to that and god saw their works that they that they turned from their evil way and god repented relented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them 
and it did the age not. The Lord is expecting there will be repentance. There are repentance in Jesus' name. That's how revival comes when there's repentance. People have been doing evil. They are worshipping idols. And you know that that's the peculiarity of that place where you are. You touch that idol and you crucify, you crush that idol, you're preaching. And the people say, oh, we're sorry. We're idol worshippers and we repent. Not that they come with their waistbands and go back home with their waistbands. They come with their juju rings and go back with their juju rings. They come with their adultery and go back with their adultery. That's no church. But when we declare the word of God, if we really want renewal, restoration, revival, we we'll preach that word of repentance, and then they're able to come. If they're unfaithful to each other, husbands and wives, and then we're just preaching and glossing over things, you make the word of God to come clear. And when the word of God comes clear, they are, they, they are broken in their hearts, and they turn to the Lord, and they love each other as they ought to love each other. That's the word where people have been stealing from their offices. You're not just preaching, you know, some superficial messages that never touches on their stealing. And then you break their hands because of the stealing of all the fraud that they are committing it is when that takes place there is repentance and then they are able to come to the Lord and that's what you find in Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 I mean it from verse 37 Acts chapter 2 verse 37 but you know in a place where they say they are preaching ever touches all the evils that they are doing the people are doing they come to church and the way they come is the way they go back they just enjoy the service sinners enjoy the service there's no broken heart, there's no contrition, there's no repentance. There must be repentance if we want real revival. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, I'm reading verse 37 now. When they had this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said unto them, repent that's the word repent chapter 3 i'm looking at chapter 3 verse 19 chapter 3 verse 19 repent ye therefore and be converted repent ye therefore and be converted verse 26 so to you false god have been have been raised up his son jesus sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities turning away every one of you from his iniquities chapter 17 of acts verses 30 and 31 verses 30 and 31 and the times of this ignorance god winged that but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent that's the requirement of the word of god if revival is going to come if restoration is going to come if righteousness is going to take the place of unrighteousness if renewal is going to come it demands repentance and it demands that repentance from everyone because in verse 31 he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained whereof he has given assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead chapter 19 of acts acts chapter 19 i'm reading from verse 10 Acts chapter 19 verse 10 and this continued by the space of two years so that all they that dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus both Jews and Greeks you are there for two years in that region. You have not covered all the villages. That's not according to Bible pattern. You are there in that state for, you know, all these ten years. You have not covered all the villages and all the towns. That's not the, that's not the will of God for us here. And then you are in that nation. You have been there for two years. Now you only barely know the capital. Not even all the, all the districts and all the streets, all the localities of that capital. And you are just in that local place with all those few members. After ten years of ministry on the missionary field in Asia Minor here we are told that uh, Paul the Apostle was there within the space of these uh, two years we are told that all the people that they had the word of the Lord also or the effect of the word upon them look at this in verse 18 and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds and many of them also which used curious as magical as uh, all those uh, parts of darkness they brought their books together and they punched them before all men and they counted the price of them and found it 50 pieces 50 000 pieces of silver that's what the lord is expecting today i read to you in nehemiah chapter 8 that when repentance came upon those people they cried the word look at second corinthians chapter 7 
second Corinthians chapter 7 I read from verse 9 now I rejoice not that she were made sorry they were made sorry but Paul the apostle was happy he wrote to them he said take away and drive away and discipline that your righteous fellow in your midst your glory is not good you have that fellow committing sin with the father's wife and then you're still speaking in tongues and manifesting gifts of the spirit get up and deal with sin and when they got that letter they become sorrowful and paul the apostle then wrote his second letter to them saying i rejoice not that you were made sorry but that ye sorrowed to repentance their sorrow of heart their conviction and their contrition led them to repentance and then it says in this verse 9 for ye were made sorry after a godly manner that ye might receive damage by us in nothing listen to this in verse 10 for godly sorrow walketh repentance godly sorrow walketh repentance to salvation not to be regretted of not to be repented of but the sorrow of the world walketh death for behold the same same thing that he sorrowed after a godly sword what carefulness it wrought in you yes what uh, what clearing of yourself yea what indignation yea what fear yea what vehement desire yea what zeal yea what revenge in all things ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter and that's what the lord is expecting revelation chapter 2 repentance as, as uh, the, the proper re response to the hearing of the word of god in revelation chapter 2 verses 4 and 5 nevertheless i have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love not only repentance is not only for those who have never known the lord those who knew the lord before but they have left their first love and they are no more as consecrated as committed all they are doing now is just you know just fellowship and just socializing but it says you have left your first love what's the first love consecration not to go anywhere that can do anything consecration that immediately we hear the call of the lord just like that we respond promptly what's the first love the first love that is thinking about the perishing souls more than we're thinking about our own a kind of comfort or our own a kind of a security that's the first love they left and jesus said i have somewhat against you you've left your first love religion goes on but the love of god that is sacrificial that's no more there in verse 5 it says remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent that's the word of the lord that's the word of jesus christ remember where you are falling and repent and do the first works or else i will come unto thee quickly and will remove the candlestick out of its place except thou repent revelation chapter 3 i'm reading from verses 2 and 3 revelation chapter 3 verses 2 and 3 be watchful and strengthen the things which remain be watchful and strengthen the things which remain look up here for a moment the lord is speaking to our church every pastor here every leader here every section leader here you know in those days a wonderful days have gone by nothing ever disturbed our fellowship our bible study our church service our revival hour I can remember when a great man of God from, uh, from America came uh, to Lagos and was uh, having his uh, crusade and this a powerful preacher. When you listen to that man, R.W. Shambach, when Shambach talks, everybody, everybody pays attention because Shambach can carry the crowd. And he came to Lagos and was having his uh, you know, crusade somewhere and it uh, fell on a Monday Bible study. All our people coming to the Bible study, of course, he could hear all the, you know, that man, when that man talks, he, his loudspeaker will blare every, even in America when he talks, it's, it must be your, your standard attention because that's the kind of speaker he is. He's still alive. And, uh, you know, as a people, who are coming, they kept on coming to the Bible study. We didn't miss a single soul. That's the way we were at that time. But you know, today, if uh, you have, uh, you know, um, a kind of local evangelist preaching somewhere, village evangelist preaching somewhere, and uh, these people that said they have gone into the other world and then they come back, I don't want anybody to come and tell me about the other world. I want someone to come and tell me about what Jesus said in the Bible. You know, all these people that uh, Jesus raised some people from the dead. It, it Raise, give me one name that you remember that raised from the dead Lazarus Lazarus did not uh, you know replace the apostles and then going here you know I, I was there four days and I went to that other side I saw the 
he shut up his mouth because what we need is not the story that you are telling you are bringing from the grave we need the story we are bringing from calvary that jesus christ has declared you know that uh, that girl of 12 years that she you know jesus raised the daughter of jairus it didn't uh, you know go about from house to house when i died before jesus christ resurrected me and resuscitated me this is what i saw that is what nothing like that at all and that's what you'll find and dockers when dockers has died and then peter came and raised her from the dead doctors don't say i have now a great ministry I'm, and you're greater than the apostles don't talk about apostles to me who are they i have gone to the other side i've seen this and seen that people are making money today with all these lies they're telling i saw this i saw that and then so did you see my senior brother there when you went to the other side I hope you are not asking them that kind of question because we'll come back to the word and it is the word that is going to help us bring the revival that we need. All these people that are running about telling stories, they are not going to disturb our Bible study. And they are not going to disturb our revival time. And all the stories they are telling for the God from the dark world or whatever, we're not going to listen to them anymore in Jesus' name. And then somebody begins to write, you saw a vision and all that. If you know the kinds of foolish things that are going on, you know, Jesus is going to come, you know, this particular time, and then this is going to happen. There's going to be a great famine, begin to stock, uh, stockpile a food, because if you don't buy food now, there will be no food to buy. If the Lord has said in uh, this particular, those foolish things, that those things that don't have any basis in the word of God. And deeper life people, of course, they're not real deeper life people. You know, some people, they don't know their, they don't know deeper life. They, they don't even know deep life, not to talk of deeper life. But this place where I am is called what? Deeper. This is deeper life. And when you have that, the deep teaching of the word of God, and nobody can fool you and toss you here and there, you are stable. And you are solid. And all of these things do not interest you. You don't have itching ears. Turning onto fables. We stand upon the watch of the Lord. And the Lord is saying that we strengthen the things that strengthen the church. And get the church back to the basis of the watch of God. Look at that again. Chapter 3 verse 2 of Revelation. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. That are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. I have not found your works perfect before God remember therefore how thou was received and heard and hold fast and repent if therefore thou shalt not if thou, 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 shalt, thou shalt not hold fast and repent if you will not if thou shalt not watch I will come on thee as a thief and thou shalt not know what hour I will come unto thee I pray will be obedient to the word of the Lord in Jesus name I come to the final point now the final point is talking to us about um, about the demonstration the demonstration of their devotion the devotion to practical righteousness this is wonderful come and look at it in nehemiah chapter 8 nehemiah chapter 8 i'm reading there from verse 13 nehemiah chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 13 you see the children say people they really wanted revival just like we really want revival we're going to have the revival in jesus name revelation chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 13 it says and uh, on the second day we gathered together the chief of the fathers of all the people and the priests and the levites unto ezra the scribe even to understand the words of the law i, I thought they had got enough because as we read from verse 6 ezra came and opened the book before them and he read and read and read and they came again they said we want more we want more i believe that there are people like us so we are like them i said we're like them in jesus name and you know sometimes if uh, you when you go to some other meetings uh, the final time like this people are looking at their watches and they're saying well this is the final day when are we going to stop and i'm saying that it's like we should even begin we should start all over again i say it's like we should start all over again and these people came they said tell our teachers we want to understand more of the word of god look at verse 14 and they found reaching in the law which the lord had commanded by moses that the children of israel should dwell in boats in the feast of the seventh month they found something 
They need to understand. They need to all understand. You see, uh, what I appreciate in the time of Nehemiah with the children of Judah is that when they read something from the word of God, that they should build booths and live inside that booth for a particular period. Maybe they didn't all understand, but all the same they said, we're going to do it. We will do it in Jesus' name. Look at the next verse in verse 15. And that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount and fetch holy branches and pine, pine branches and mature branches of the thick trees and palm branches too to make boats as it is written as it is written and then it says in verse 16 so the people went forth and brought them and made themselves boats every one upon the roof of his house just as it is written and in their cause and in the cause of the house of god and in the street of the water gate and in the street of the gate of Ephraim and all the congregation beautiful all the congregation you know they are not saying I don't understand this and if I don't understand how can I obey it's not it's not what you understand once the word of God has declared this is what to do and it says all the congregation of them that were come again out of captivity they made boats and sat under the boats for since the days of Joshua the son of Nun unto that day had not the children of Israel done so and there, and there was very great gladness can you see that for about more than 1000 years that had not been done a long time and yet because they discovered each in the word of God they said although they've not done this in the time of Joshua what about that Joshua is after that the time of the judges came they didn't do that even David didn't do that even Solomon didn't do that and then up to the time of Nehemiah it says since that time of Joshua the children of Israel had not done this but we discovered it in the word of God you know there are some people they will say how is it deeper life we're only people preaching sanctification that other church is not preaching it that other church is not preaching it. that other church is not because all these other people are not doing they feel that that excuses us that even if we discover it in the word of God we cannot do it because after all others are not doing it other people will say hi about this about the Holy Ghost and speaking of tongues other this one is not doing it this one that's not the matter other people will say you know about this divorce and remarriage that you know you keep with your wife until death do your part other people feel that you know if your wife is a liar but you are not in agreement together and she doesn't cook your food very well and she burns uh, you know your potato or whatever because of not knowing how to cook kick her away and they permit them hi about us here why don't we we do the same thing it's not what they do it's what the word of god has declared and we're going to stand for that in jesus name it says that from the time of joshua the children of israel as a nation they had not done this until this time. but the imam said now i am here for revival i'm here for restoration everything we have in the word of god we're going to restore into our lives into our families in jesus name what a wonderful thing the Lord is telling us be ye doers of the word and not hearers only in James chapter 1 James chapter 1 I'm reading here from verse 22 James chapter 1 we're looking at verse 22 see the, the cooperation of these people with leadership they say if the word says so we'll rise up and do it if the word declares it we'll rise up and we'll do it in James chapter 1 verse 22 it says but he but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like a man beholding his face his natural face in a glass for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway he forgetteth what manner of man he was but whosoever whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he not he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. This man, that's you. I said, This man, that's you. Yes. Say that's me. that's me. This man shall be blessed in his deed. You are blessed in Jesus' name. 
when we hear the word of God and then we do that word of God and we're not waiting for other people other people are not doing it other people are not emphasizing it that doesn't matter we just know that we are people that have the dawn the dawn of a mighty revival like Nehemiah and we are the people to carry out the word of the Lord Revelation chapter 22 Revelation chapter 22 and we're reading from verse 12 Revelation 22 verse 12 and behold I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be i am alpha and omega the beginning and the end the first and the last blessed are they that do his commandments that's why the blessing is coming upon you you have made up your mind you are going to do the commandments of the lord everything we discover in the word of god everything we learn from the word of god that we're going to do the work of god we're going to do it the way god himself has outlined in the world and he says blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city we're going to that heavenly city not one of us here and one of us or any one of us among the workers among our leaders among our ministers not one of us among our members will miss that city in jesus name the glorious city you will get there i will get there with you and then by the grace of God, we're going to bring multitudes of people into that glorious city because before us there is a dawn of a promised revival why don't you rise up and say lord i want to be part of that that revival the dawn the dawn the dawn of a mighty revival i'll be part of that the lord has taught us so much so much in this a book of nehemiah and the lord is telling us that we must be part of this great dawn great dawn why don't you open your mouth and talk to the lord the things of lunch and the things of heard take everything to the lord in prayer i'm a part of the dawn the part of the dawn nehemiah had laid a good foundation and has given us all these great great principles Discover active, worthy Nehemiahs, your locality, your district, your group, your region, your stage. Discover, done. Discover active, worthy Nehemiahs. They are there. Don't overlook them. Polish them up. Develop them. Encourage them. Equip them. Engage them. Assign them to the work they ought to do. Discover them. If you always see your study not coming out, how do you discover people? If you never see it where the people see it, stay where the people stay, stand where the people stand, interact with them, talk to them. If you erect a thick wall or partition between you and the members, how do you discover them? Discover, active, what the Nehemiahs, they are there. Draw a weekend workmen nationwide. Get them, draw them. Get them interested. Don't drive them away. Tell the Lord, oh Lord, help me. Use me as an instrument. For dawn, develop awakened, available, willing nobles. Develop available, willing nobles. Don't allow their knowledge to intimidate you. You are their pastor. Draw them nearer. 
Don't allow the academic titles to intimidate you. You are their leader, their pastor, their shepherd. Draw them near, develop, available, willing, nobles. That's what Nehemiah did. You delegate, able, watchmen, noticeably. Don't be so proud and think I must, the only, I must be the only one that is known. No, you cannot be. The other people, capable people, effective people, make them known. Introduce them. Give them assignments that make people to know them. Release them to do the work. Delete apostate workers' names. Those who are backsliding and they're not willing to be restored. They live in sin and enjoy their sin. Delete their names from the workers list. When we say sin, I mean real sin. Not just differences between you and them. But real sin. But diligently address workers' needs. There's complaints coming from any section of the world. Listen to their complaint. Maybe the leader is negligent. Address that issue. From the ushers, address the issue. Choir, address the issue. From the children, church workers, address the issues. From the security brethren, address the issue. Don't explain it away. Don't justify yourself. Oh, I'm sorry, brothers. I'm sorry, sisters. Looks like we have been negligent in that area. Address that immediately and meet those needs. Diligently address workers' needs. Done. Disengage adversaries worldly networks. One leg inside deeper life, another leg in another place, shallow life. And they are the connection between deeper life and those evil networks. Disengage them. Their mind is not fully here. The heart is not fully here. They are not dependable. Don't allow them to destroy the church. Sinners that come to the church will be led to repentance and salvation. Believers that come or be led to maturity and perfection. Then we're bringing them from members to ministry to become ministers, workers. You have a church of 500 and you don't have up to 100 workers. How can that be? Discover them, work with them. Love the members. Don't drive people away through your attitude. Draw them close. The people of God, God needs everyone. It's all hands on the plow. That revival will come. Revival is coming. Do you believe that? I said, revival is coming. Do you believe that? Yes. Well, come through you and throw me and throw us together in Jesus' name. Yes. 
We are going to pray now everything of God during this retreat. The Lord will seal it and the Lord will preserve it in our lives in Jesus' name. All the ministries that have come to us and everything we have learned, we are going to retain all those blessings in our lives in Jesus' name. All that we prayed about the gifts of the Spirit, the power of the Spirit and Holy Ghost coming upon us. If you have not seen the manifestation yet, that manifestation will follow you home in Jesus' name. And as you go, the Lord will protect you. The Lord will preserve you. You come to a new level of ministry in Jesus' name. New power. New anointing. New breakthrough. New joy of the Lord. And your strength in your life in Jesus' name. Past negative things are forgotten. A new thing has started in our lives. You'll see it like I will see it. The joy of celebration will be in your heart in Jesus' name. And I pray that new anointing will come upon our choir. Everywhere the means I'm telling you that souls are going to be drawn to the Lord in Jesus' name. And not only in Lagos, but everywhere, I just know that something new has started already in Jesus' name. And then, you know, in the past, I used to be the only one saying, there's one man there that is having that as something. Raise up your hand, and then we'll pray, and then miracle, I transfer that to you in Jesus' name. You know, as we go every district and every group and every region and every state and every nation, I pray the power of God will be moving mightily in Jesus' name. You know, our sisters over there, don't leave it to us men. We sisters too. God is going to do something to our women for. You know, you lay hands on the sick, they are going to recover. And you know, sometimes when you find a sister filled with the Holy Ghost and their power is moving her, and you know, sometimes they are more dynamic than men. You men have to be careful now because if we are not careful, those women, they are going to outrun us. But we are going to run together in Jesus' name. And our children, our youths, and our campus people, our women's section, every section, you know, every section, the power of God is going to saturate everywhere in Jesus' name. You will not cry. You will not weep. Bad things will not happen to you. The hand of the Lord is upon you. The anointing of God is upon your life. God has given a mark, and evil people that see you, they will run away from you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this day and for this hour. Lord, we just pray your blessing will come in a multiplied fold upon everyone in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, I pray the anointing that breaks the yoke will break the yoke from every life in Jesus' name. Any incredible disease, impossible. Impossible. Because, Lord, we are members of the body of Christ. How will sickness and disease or demon attack and affliction stay on anyone? Any of those things, I break it away from the lives of the people of God here in Jesus' name. And all those brothers and sisters and ministers and leaders and overseers and their wives and their children and all the people of God, all the workers, oh Lord, I transfer your power unto them in Jesus' name. Lord, because we believe you, Lord, this sign shall follow every one of us. In your name, Lord, will speak with new tongues. In your name, we we'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And any poison that comes accidentally and to any contact with our body will not hurt us in Jesus' name. In the day, in the night, protect your people. On the road, protect your people. In the bus, protect your people. In the plane, protect your people. In the ship, in the boat, protect your people. Day and night, protect your people in Jesus' name. And I pray that your power will multiply in our lives. The anointing will multiply in our lives. And as we go, oh Lord, success we have never seen before, we'll see that again. And breakthrough we have never seen before, we'll see that again. And Lord, we just pray that, Lord, the joy of the Lord will be the strength of everyone in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, as we go, no sorrow in any heart. No sadness in any heart. And those who have it, they don't have enough, I pray, Lord, divine provision you are going to give unto them. We will not lack. Every brother in this church, you will not lack. Every sister in this church, you will not lack. Lord, I pray for everyone. I pray that the goodness of the Lord will be multiplied in every life in Jesus' name. 
oh lord i just pray it's like we shouldn't stop but lord we're just stopping temporarily now we'll come back together again and when we come back again lord testimonies of joy testimonies of praise oh lord i pray that my success and victory and breakthrough will bring back in jesus name we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray and everybody said amen amen